Thank you. Order. I wish to make a statement to the House. There has been much speculation over the past week about the possibility of the Government bringing before the House a motion on Brexit for another so-called meaningful vote under the statutory framework provided in the EU Withdrawal Act 2018. On the 13th of March, however, the Right Honourable Lady, the Member for Wallasey, asked on a point of order at column 394 whether it would be proper for the Government to keep bringing the same deal back to the House ad infinitum. I replied that no ruling was necessary at that stage, but that one might be required at some point in the future. Subsequently, members on both sides of the House, and indeed on both sides of the Brexit argument, have expressed their concerns to me about the House being repeatedly asked to pronounce on the same fundamental proposition. The 24th edition of Erskine May states on page 397 that, and I quote, a motion or an amendment which is the same in substance as a question which has been decided during a session may not be brought forward again during that same session. It goes on to state that, and I quote, attempts have been made to evade this rule by raising again with verbal alterations the essential portions of motions which have been negatived. Whether the second motion is substantially the same as the first is finally a matter for the judgment of the chair. This convention is very strong and of long standing, dating back to the 2nd of April, 1604. Last Thursday, the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Rhonda, quoted examples of occasions when the ruling had been reasserted by four different speakers of this House, notably in 1864, 1870, 1882, 1891 and 1912. Each time the Speaker of the day ruled that a motion could not be brought back because it had already been decided in that same session of Parliament. Indeed, Erskine May makes reference to no fewer than 12 such rulings up to the year 1920. One of the reasons why the rule has lasted so long is that it is a necessary rule to ensure the sensible use of the House's time and the proper respect for the decisions which it takes. Decisions of the House matter. They have weight. In many cases, they have direct effects, not only here, but on the lives of our constituents. Absence of Speaker intervention since 1920 is attributable not to the discontinuation of the Convention, but to general compliance with it. Thus, as Erskine May notes, the Public Bill Office has often disallowed bills on the ground that a bill with the same or very similar long title cannot be presented again in the same session. So far as our present situation is concerned, let me summarise the chronology of events. The draft EU withdrawal agreement, giving effect to the deal between the Government and the EU, was published on the 14th of November, and the agreement itself 
together with the accompanying political declaration on the future relationship, received endorsement from the European Council on the 25th of November. The first scheduled vote on what I will hereafter refer to as the deal was due to take place on the 11th of December. However, on the 10th of December, the vote was postponed after 164 speeches had already been made over three of the five days allotted for the debate. That postponement was not caused by me, nor by the House, but by the Government. Indeed, I pointed out at the time that this was deeply discourteous to the House, and I suggested that the permission of the House for that postponement should be sought. Regrettably, it was not. Over five weeks later, following a further five-day debate, the first meaningful vote was held on the 15th of January, which the Government lost by a margin of 230 votes, the largest in parliamentary history. Subsequently, the second meaningful vote was expected to take place in February, but once again there was a postponement. It finally happened only last Tuesday, the 12th of March. The Government's motion on the deal was again very heavily defeated. In my judgment, that second meaningful vote motion did not fall foul of the Convention about matters already having been decided during the same session. This was because it could credibly be argued that it was a different proposition from that already rejected by the House on the 15th of January. It contained a number of legal changes which the Government considered to be binding and which had been agreed with the European Union after further intensive discussions. Moreover, the Government's second meaningful vote motion was accompanied by the publication of three new documents, two issued jointly with the EU and the third a unilateral declaration from the UK not objected to by it. In procedural terms, it was therefore quite proper that the debate and the second vote took place last week. The Government responded to its defeat, as it had promised to do, by scheduling debates about a no-deal Brexit and an Article 50 extension on the 13th and 14th of March, respectively. It has been strongly rumoured, though I have not received confirmation of this, that third and even possibly fourth meaningful vote motions will be attempted. Hence this statement, which is designed to signal what would be orderly and what would not. This is my conclusion. If the Government wishes to bring forward a new proposition that is neither the same nor substantially the same as that disposed of by the House on the 12th of March, this would be entirely in order. What the Government cannot legitimately do is to resubmit to the House the same proposition or substantially the same proposition as that of last week, which was rejected by 149 votes. This ruling should not be regarded as my last word on the subject. It is simply meant to indicate the test which the Government must meet 
in order for me to rule that a third meaningful vote can legitimately be held in this parliamentary session. Order. Yes, indeed. Point, uh, point of order. Yes, point of order. Sir Peter Bottomley.